Hey, you do, but just doing a video here regarding um, ethanol fuel and uh, using that in a small engine. I've seen a lot of, uh, I, I got some comments on some video, a video I did talking about showing how to recondition some gasoline that got uh, water ethanol contamination. Uh, and then I also seen other videos where they said to use, you know, non-ethanol fuel. So just want to present this uh, to explain uh, some background on that and if that is necessary or not. So when you're talking about ethanol and fuel, okay, you could have non-ethanol. Non-ethanol fuel would be basically 0% ethanol, 100% gasoline. Then what is E10? Well, E10 is going to be 90% gas, lean, and 10% ethanol. So you may find this in a pump or E10. In the United States, pump gas should tell you, you know, may contain up to 10% ethanol so that's e10 a uh, small engine will run on this fine okay but you know you're getting 90 percent gasoline in there and 10 percent ethanol so ethanol just as a fuel itself uh, is not as volatile as gasoline so this mixture uh, will not provide the same uh, btu or output as you would with this but you're talking about only 10 percent now e85 which is something completely different this is 85 percent ethanol and 15 percent gas or something else this won't run in a small engine this is you know you would have to have a a, a tuned engine say from from a manufacturer to run this so obviously you know, this is something that you don't want to use right here. I'm just presenting as to what it is. But now, <clears throat> they do make, if you can find pump gas that says it's non-ethanol, then, you know, it doesn't have ethanol in it. Uh, they do sell uh, in cans in like a home center, non-ethanol fuel. Like a, it goes by a true fuel. Uh, but comparatively speaking, per gallon, you're paying a lot more to get that then what you get out of a pump okay so can this be used in your small engine well I would say yeah uh, but the main thing is you know just to institute some I'd call it good housekeeping practices if you get a can of fuel uh, don't keep it for more than say 30 days Okay, so basically what I did was, you know, I put a date on here, the month, the year, and I also indicated I put stabilizer in. So if I go beyond it, now 30 days, you know, I may have some more time that I can, you know, continue to use this by using a stabilizer product. Now, I'm not endorsing this particular product, but uh, it does say that it's supposed to, uh, you know, keep up to a year do I know this really works or if it doesn't I don't know I haven't tested it I haven't really seen any test results the only thing I've seen people try to do is take fuel that either had water in it or some kind of phase separation and put this in and this does not work to cure that problem this is a preventative that Actually, you could see, I don't know if you can read it here, but it says prevents gum varnish and corrosion. Okay, so I wouldn't rely on this product. What I would rely on is just get enough fuel that you, you think you can use in a month. And if for some reason, say, you know, over the summertime, you're not cutting your grass, it's, it's a heat wave or something, and this fuel is here a couple months. Just take what you have, put it in your engine, 
when you when you're going to fill up if you put say a gallon of you know this fuel in here and then you you fill up with another 10 gallons you're going to dilute that down and just replenish this with fresh fuel put the stabilizer in and don't buy any more than you need for you know 30 days so now it, whatever's in your tank in your mower uh, what i would recommend is you know nowadays that mostly every small engine now has you know has a plastic tank so if you if you had old steel tanks sometimes uh, when you took when you left them empty there's a chance they could rust but if you have a plastic tank like this obviously you just you know you run your machine out out of fuel and uh, you know th this tank is not going to be damaged by sitting here with nothing in it in fact it's probably going to be better to have nothing in it uh, than if you actually had fuel in here so that would be the other option any you know tools that you're not going to use whether it's a mower or snowblower for an extended period of time uh, you know run out the fuel that's in there if you have to you know drain out uh, siphon off the tank you know put it into a container if you have a lot in there or you know ideally just you know don't really top it up when you're getting towards you know the end of the season and then just run that tank empty so by doing that you should uh, you know eliminate any kind of ethanol problems the you know the fuel to 10 percent if you will is 10 percent is blended in with this 80 percent so uh, you know as it comes out of the pump you know it could be depending on whatever you know went into that service station tank if they got a delivery which was 10 percent and filled the tank and then got another delivery maybe it was non-ethanol fuel if that's zero you know maybe it'll only be five percent but at max 10 so this 10 percent ethanol is mixed in here it really doesn't separate until it gets humidity and it attracts water into the fuel and that's where you get that separation where you would you'd actually see something you know another layer down the bottom here now i showed in that other video how you could you know recover the fuel that was still in there and reuse it and separate out that ethanol out of that fuel ethanol mixed with water actually um, but if you follow you know good housekeeping don't leave stuff in your engine for more than you know 30 days and uh, you know you just keep replenishing this tank you know if you if you know you you know maybe you can use uh this much in a month and just buy that much don't buy you know five gallons and if you have two cycle equipment i would say get a separate can that's small enough for that like a gallon can and just leave that as two cycle fuel uh, or another option would be uh, you know take that amount that would fill your tank into another container say a 16 ounce container of some type and then measure out how much extra fuel or um, two cycle fuel you need and just basically just mix up that enough that you need at that time to fill that so you don't even you don't even have a gallon of two cycle fuel sitting around so that's just my uh, thing I wanted to put out there just so that uh, I had, like I said there was a couple questions about using this fuel so um, yeah you know just try to do good housekeeping and don't leave fuel sitting around for you know more than 30 days or you know if you have stabilizer maybe 60 days maybe I've gone to 90 uh, on some you know rare occasions but that's about it so just follow that and you should be good okay thanks